Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be installing KDE Neon. So what KDE Neon is, is a distribution that is based on the KDE desktop environment. So KDE is one of the oldest desktop environments, has been around for a while now, and KDE Neon is a distro that is made by the KDE developers themselves. So I'm going to navigate over to the KDE Neon page. Looks like it's neon.kde.org. I'm going to hit the download button. And in this video, I'm going to be installing the user edition. So here it looks like the user edition for my 64-bit computer is 1.2 gigabytes. So I'm going to download that, flash it onto a USB, and boot it up. And I'll resume when it's done booting up. So I just flashed the ISO file onto a USB drive, and KDE Neon is currently booting up. So as you can see, we have the KDE loading screen right now, and KDE has finished loading up. Oh, well, almost. So the KDE desktop has finished loading, and as you can see in the far top left, we have the install Neon user icon here. So I'm going to click on that. As you can see, we have that cool little KDE loading icon, the bouncing thing. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so on the side, we have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different steps here. First of which is language selection. And it comes with a lot of languages, actually. So I have English. And then here we have two options to select to download updates and install third-party software. So I'm going to check both of these. Wait, and as you can see, it automatically detected my configuration as I have a wired connection, but if you were using Wi-Fi, you would have to go through this step right here, this wireless step. It's going to continue. Now next is the partitioning and disk setup screen. I'm going to use my entire disk for this, but here you can select manually what you want to do. If you have already allocated your disk with something else, but I have a clean disk, I'm going to so I'm going to use entire disk. And down here you can see exactly how much is going to be used. And if you had something on your disk before, you would see something in the before screen. Here. And you can also set it so that it is encrypted. But I'm, not, I'm just going to leave it as regular, guided use entire disk, and then click install now. And here it gives you a warning pop-up. Click continue. And here I'm going to select my time zone and then the keyboard layout. Looks like everything good here. It actually shows you a preview of what your keyboard should look like. So that matches. Continue. And now here I'm going to set up my user profile. But you have Linux and then a password creation. And then the name. And then you can also encrypt your home folder here. And that's it. You can just let the Neon installer finish. Okay, so the installer has finished. And now I'm presented with a few options to either restart now or continue testing. I'm going to restart it right now so that I can boot it up and review it. KDE Neon has just now finished restarting. And this is the login screen. So it is very aesthetically pleasing, simple and not too hard to use. So I'm going to enter my password. And currently the KDE desktop environment is loading up. So here we have the KDE Neon distribution fully booted up 
and installed. And now here is the review part of the, the video. So right off the bat, you can see a application launcher here in the corner at the bottom. And then we have the time, system volume, connections, and updates on the right side. So similar to GNOME and XFCE. So we can go to our file manager, which is Dolphin in this case, the stock KDE now. And the current version of this is, looks like KDE Neon 5.9. So that's good. It's not the LTS version, so it's not going to be supported for as, as long. So let's see what kind of applications we have here. In development, we have translation and document browser. In graphics, it comes with document viewer and KDE image viewer, which is a stock viewer, I believe, yeah. So that's nice. And then for internet, it comes preloaded with the Firefox web browser. In multimedia, it comes with VLC, which is very well known, so that's, that's also very nice. And then in Office, looks like the LibreOffice is not actually installed in this. We still have Document Viewer. So, but of course you could install that separately, but it does not come pre-installed, which is interesting. And then system settings here, under settings and under utilities, we have basic text editor, KWrite, Vim, screenshot capture. Let's see how this works. Oh, okay. You can actually select this too. That's pretty nice. Okay. And then that looks like it's it. Yeah, and you also have an archiving tool to extract and archive zips and stuff like that. Okay, so those are the applications. Now let's hop over to the software center just to see how this looks. Okay, interesting. So the software center is a little bit different. It is looks like it's organized pretty well. You have applications here on the side. You can have your search bar all the way on the left with the application menu. You can browse through, see which ones you want. We have some popular apps here. And then you have your updates down here at the bottom left. Settings, I guess for, oh, you can select which packages and sources are on your computer and then install. That's also very cool. And of course, on the side, you have your classic KDE drop down here, which includes widgets and logout reboot settings. So let's add a widget right now just to see how this goes. Okay, um, have color picker, some pretty cool ones. All your managers, mo monitors, puzzles, clocks. and notifications interesting okay so we have that and then let's look at the settings for a second advanced general setting system settings okay so we have workspace theme here probably comes print stop yep with the breeze Classic KDE. Change to Breeze Dark. Let's just see how it looks. Apply. Hmm, very nice. Okay. And then you have your desktop theme. These different ones here. Cursor theme. Also Breeze. And then Splash Screen. Okay, cool. And then fonts. We have the Noto. Fonts installed. And you have your whole range. Oh yeah, it also comes with KDE Connect. Which lets you get notifications and sync with your phone. So there aren't too many bugs I've encountered, which is a bit different. Cool, okay. And then let's look at the terminal. 
and it looks like all the super keys are working correctly, so the keyboard was properly detected. Just run sudo, make sure everything's working. And the terminal also looks really nice. It comes with console, which is the default terminal for KDE distros. And of course you have your tabs here, which is nice. And new window. It's cool you can have it running side by side. Nice. And then now let's look at the performance. So I'm going to go over to the monitor. Looks like it comes with K Syscar for your system monitor or task manager. And it looks like we're running at about half a gigabyte of memory and nothing on network and CPU. It's running at about 16, actually at about, yeah, 10%. So not too much there. 500 500 megabytes is actually pretty good for this KDE install, and that's might also be since there aren't many applications or anything pre-installed, not too many, such as the LibreOffice suite. So that's nice. So let me try to install a package now. So I'm going to start, try to install LibreOffice. So I'm going to open up Software Center, And let me search for LibreOffice. Okay, good. So it looks like we have all the LibreOffice applications. Let me install Writer. So just, just click over here and then install. And it's... Okay, so we have the authentication. And it's sort of like the GNOME Software Center. That's what it reminds me of. So it looks like it's installing, and let's see if we get any notifications. Okay, so we don't really get anything here. We do get the update button here, but not... I don't... doesn't look like there's any progress or anything here. Interesting. Have some screenshots. It is taking a while, actually. LibreOffice has finally finished installing, but it wasn't too long. It was only about a minute more after I cut off the video, but still a little bit longer than expected. So let's just open that up and see what happens. Should be under Office, okay good. Looks like it's booting up, okay good. We have full LibreOffice. Oh. Okay, good. I'm also going to see... Okay, so it looks like... Okay, that's weird. The theme doesn't properly apply here. That's interesting. So it does look a little bit off, but it doesn't really interfere with productivity. So let me try to change the background. Let's see, configure desktop, and then background, wallpaper... Okay, so it looks like it only comes with one wallpaper, but if you click Get New Wallpapers over here, it looks like it taps into a repository of lots of wallpapers. And that's kind of nice. So you get a bunch of wallpapers here. Let's sort it by rating. Let's install this one. Okay, it's installed. And loads up here, good. Okay, that's odd. Okay, it looks like it didn't load up properly. Not sure what's happening here. I don't know if it actually downloaded or not. Let me try another one. Try parallel. Okay, that was an error. Let's try another one. Okay, that one was successful. And it's not appearing here. Not sure what's happening here, but looks like there is some error there. So you might just want to download an image and then apply it that way. And the final thing I'm going to do in this video is boot up Firefox. Just to see how it looks. 
It's taking a while. Okay, here we are. Okay, good. So overall, KDE Neon is a very nice distribution. It is simple to use for all users, whether you're coming from Windows or Mac OS or just want to try out another distro. And it has a few bugs, like many people have said. But yeah, in general, it is a very nice distro, customizable, and very easy to install. So that's it. Hope you enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more Linux videos. Thanks for watching.